And that's recording. And here comes the music. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. <laughs> America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Welcome to another exciting episode of America F1, where we're doing a Spanish Grand Prix preview. Today we have, obviously, our co-host, Mike. We have our... Second special co-host, Paul, all the way from Ireland. Hi, Paul. And today Hi. we're doing the state of the grid, where we think people are ranking so far almost in the one-third point of the race season and where we think they are. Not historically, not from last year, just from the first race to now. So all the biases about how great you love Max Verstappen, Verstappen. <laughs> or how great Paul loves Lewis Hamilton. We aren't going to take those into consideration. We're going to be totally unbiased and talk about where they are right now at this moment. Okay. Hit it. Which one? Who's number 20? Oh, shit, Mike. All right. <laughs> number 20 for me is the American King Latifi. King Latifi. King Latifi, Logan Sargent at number 20. And <laughs> there's quite a many reasons why. The main reason is he shouldn't he can't be the drive. one. He can't drive. <laughs> but that's, I, I can go through. In Bahrain, he was two laps down. In Saudi Arabia, is one lap down. Jesus. In Australia, he, he they took his car away. And let <laughs> oh, Albon that's right. Drive, I forgot, if you I remember. About that. In Japan, he was 17th, one lap down. In China, he was 17th. In Miami, DNF. In Italy, he was 17. Jesus Christ, and, how do you know all this? In Monaco, he was two laps. In Monaco, he was two laps down. Yeah, two. Like a, not one, that but could two. Happen, that could happen to the best of somebody. And in Canada, he dnf once again. The guy is a walking crash waiting to happen. And without him, some of the races wouldn't have, like Lando wouldn't win. You know, there wouldn't, Max wouldn't have won without him crashing. There's a lot. He affects the grid like he American Latifi that he is. Who's Latifi? Oh, Paul, educate this young man, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you see what I have to deal with, Paul? Go ahead, Paul. I've only met Mike, so I'm not going to start insulting him on the first part. Oh, you can't bring it. Bring it. <laughs> no, please. Please insult him, Paul. So that's what we do here. Insult Mike. He's an idiot. If I'm, if I'm correct, it's, it's 11 a.m. in the morning there? Yeah, it is. Okay, are you are you drunk, no, Mike? <laughs> what? Are you drunk, Mike? <laughs> no, I, I wish I was though. <laughs> drunk, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, drunk, Paul. Mike. Um. Oh, look, Latifi uh, was the whole. I know who he was. I was just kidding. The... Oh, who you were. Okay, fine. Who was it? You don't know. Carry oh, on. Let, let's, let's go back to Logan. Sorry, let's look at the class. Oh God. Oh, oh, he he crashed in the 2021. All right, all right, all right, all right. Go ahead. Correct. And several other and several other races. <laughs> <laughs> several other times, yeah. His daddy had money. Lots of money. Oh no. Oh yes, he did. Did you know yeah. uh, Latifi's father bought Lance Stro Lawrence Stroll's yacht? Oh really? <laughs> there's, yeah. There's so the biggest one that was in Monaco uh, one year previous um, was actually Lawrence Stroll's yacht, and the following year it had been transferred to Latifi's name. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Good knowledge. They were having problems oh, birthing it. Logan Sargent. And, and Logan where Sargent. is he on your grid? You're asking my opinion? Yeah. Yeah, that's why you're right here. Okay. We're over I, I can't hear everything you're saying. So Logan Sargent is basically a moving chicane. <laughs> <laughs> He's problematic. He's wobble through the corners. Yeah. He's problematic. Um, I, you know, look, you know, a, a lot of drivers can shine in other formulas. 
and they're picked for sponsorships. They're picked for purpose. In this case, Logan is the, you know, he was supposed to fly the American flag. And because we've now got three races in America, it's very important that we have an American essence. And I, I fully support this. But unfortunately, Logan is not the guy. Also, and I think it's terribly unfair. Um, you always see the younger drivers and they are in cars that are not as strong. So we never get to see their true performance if they're not in, in strong cars. So they just become moving chicanes as in they get lapped, they get they crash, but they're trying. And I don't think like Logan is a bad driver. Um, I just don't think that um, I just don't think it's working for him at Williams. And I think that Williams have to move on. I mean, Doralto Capital, Doralto Capital are the sponsors there, which is an American an American uh, backing, and they're pouring funds in there uh, to help James Vows, who, by the way, made a very important uh, comment about Lewis Hamilton recently, and I want to say it later. Um, but I just don't think that it's matching up, and I don't think that Logan's going to keep that seat. And I, I think it's obvious we know this because James Vows has, has like literally on his knees is looking for Carlos Sainz. So what do you think, Mike? What, where, where do you have uh, Logan Sargent? Is he last uh, on the grid for you? I haven't been at the house in a couple of weeks. Um, I think Berman's going to get that. He's, he's already basically uh, confirmed for the seat next year. And there's lots of rumors swirling around that he's going to be out of the car anyway. So, And he wobbles through the corner too much, and he's just not quick. You know, it doesn't matter if I he's think- in a bad car or a good car. He's still got to beat his teammate. And, if you, and people can see with their eyeballs if any if someone can drive or not. So, I and think Oli Berman is is pegged for Haas seat. Yeah, Haas. Yeah. Oh, I'm, so, I'm oh. sorry. I got the, I've got the teams confused. Yeah, we're talking about. Williams. <clears throat> yeah, he's going to be in the car now. He'll be in, in the Haas next year because Hulkenberg's going. Big... Yeah, but Logan Sargent is the subject of what we're talking about. Okay, I got the teams yeah. confused. Okay. Um. No, he's going to be. I think he's going to be out of the car next week, and they might put uh, what's his name in it. Your your favorite young kid, Ant Antonelli. Is that his name? You, I think they're going to wait till. Well, they just passed something. Uh, the FIA just passed that he can be seventeen, right, Paul? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So they have, they've changed the rule. Um, just to, to did they give him the super license? license. He has to yes, have he that. has a super. Okay, license. there you go. Then he, he'll be in the car he's then. earned. I think he's earned or nearly earned his supercar license points. Okay. Um, but they have changed the rule to allow him and not just him they've changed the rules so now even if you had a bright 15 year old who doesn't have and i believe that the the, the linchpin on this i believe is the fact that they have to be old enough to have a car license just a standard road car license um and they're getting rid of that part which will then allow him to actually become because remember you in certain countries my country for instance you have to be 17 to get a driver's license okay well it's 16 over here so yeah, it's 16. And some states, 15, I believe, or it used to be. No, it's been, it's been 16 forever. Yeah, oh. I mean, when I first got my license, it was 15 and a half. No, we got, our, we got, our, we got our permits our permit. when we were yeah. 15 and a half. And you get your but you couldn't drive right. by yourself until you were 16. Right. So, so sure. moving sure. on. Anyway. To me, number 19 is going to be a little controversial. I know some people may say Bodas. Some people may say Zhao. Some people may say Ocon. I'm going to say Kevin Magnuson. And the reason why I'm going to say Kevin Magnuson is he is leading in crashes in crashes and how much it costs to fix the cars that what they call the constructor, the destructor uh, championship. And also, I just don't think he's been very good this year. I think he's had a couple good races, but I think he's going to be out of Formula One next year. And there's just too, too many mistakes for a guy with that much talent and who's been around this long. So I'm putting him. Nineteenth <clears throat> on the grid. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's, he's if he's back in the car next year because they're going to have Ollie Berman in that car and they need a, a veteran to uh, sort of show him the way because who knows how quick how Berman's going to be in that car. He's really good in the Ferrari at, at Vegas, but that's sort of a, a, a lucky race. But he does have a um, his pedigree is like he wins every everything he gets in. So and he's so young. I mean, you never know when they get to this level. Either they shine or they don't shine. So we'll find out next year. So where would you put K Mag? I have him at nineteenth. I guess so. I mean, uh, it, I don't know if he's nineteenth, but because I think Zhao's not that good, and um, I don't like either Ocon or Gasly. I think those 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 are the, th- my opinion, the three worst drivers right now, besides Logan. What do you think, Paul? 
Let me bring um, you over. I, okay, so to to classify Magnuson as 19th, I don't think that's very fair. I think that you've got to blame Haas for some of this. So we all know Haas is not putting money into the into the actual team. Um, it is just a pure advertising tool for him, a, a very good one for the rest of his businesses. Um, and I don't know how strong the Haas car is. I think it's going to be bottom of the grid this year. So, you know, the problem I do think is that Magnuson is extremely aggressive and and he's a bit of a loose cannon and he just doesn't care and he's delighted to be back in a formula one seat do i think that he'll be in a car next year i agree with mike it's potentially that if Haas can't find a second driver or one of the other teams don't buy that seat because that's kind of what happens in formula one um so i think kevin could be out i think it's 50 50. That, that's the honest truth and raising him as 19th no i would put zhao there i would put i don't bottas hasn't lost it he just isn't in the right car. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if we had a big surprise and we found out that uh, they're going to put Kimi in one of the other teams and, and Bottas might take a year in Mercedes again. He was always very oh, accommodating. Because yeah, uh, Total Wolf is his manager. So, Oh, really? <clears throat> I didn't know he yeah. was his manager. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, his manager is whole see, time. I can see him stepping in. Because uh, he's the one who got him in the Williams when Total was at Williams. So, uh, uh, and then he bought himself into, into Mercedes. So, right. and, but I, I don't know about the Mercedes. The Mercedes is like, like are they going to fix their car for, for 2026? I, I, you know, it's two years away, but you know, oh, they got to come up with something I think else. We're, I think we're going to actually, well, I mean, this is a different, different topic for two seconds, but I mean, I'm, I'm actually, actually you got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. All right. Well, Mike's going okay. to the bathroom. So while he's going okay. to bathroom, we will continue <laughs> And it's not like we're just going to wait for Mike. We're not going to wait for Mike. We're not waiting for Mike. No, we don't need Moving to wait for Mike. 18th, I got uh, Valtteri Botas at 18th. And the reason why I have him at 18th and I have Zhao ahead of him at 17th is Zhao actually had a, a, some, some decent races for Zhao, I thought. I thought he was actually really good in Monaco. And I, I can't – I think it was, it was either China – or it was Japan. I can't remember. Maybe you uh, have a better recollection than I do, Paul, smoking that cigarette. Um, I am. Uh, I apologize. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think, obviously, I, I know Botas is a better driver than Zhao. But this year, I got Zhao ahead of Botas. Give me your... Do you, uh, have, access, do you have access to their points this year? Second. Can you see on another screen? Can you see their points so far? Because yeah, I, I wouldn't Botas classify, de, I wouldn't classify or declassify Zhao or Bottas ahead of each other in either way. I, I think that Bottas is is completely wasted in that team. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I really do, and it also shows that he wasn't picked up for Audi. Uh, well, which will be Audi in twenty six, um, and I would imagine he'll just stumble on another year in that team. I got a funny feeling. Zhao or Bottas? Bottas. And I don't rate him below Zhao. I'm hoping he gets a, a another a seat somewhere else. I really do because I think he's being wasted. Like you said, he's being wasted yeah. there. And I think yeah. he's a lot. He's he's a talented driver. I like both. I like Valtteri. And I think yeah, if he, he gets, go ahead. No, I'm saying he is. He is a talented driver. Look, he didn't he didn't get close to Lewis year on year when he was there without having the talent. Even yeah. in a good car. So I just think that he's in the wrong car. And it's it's unfortunate. And we all knew when he went to that team after being in Mercedes, it's very much like, well, if Carlos goes to Williams or, you know, if any of these drivers end up driving in, you know, they've had their chance in the bigger Formula teams and then they get ousted and they end up in a lower team just to be able to stay in Formula One and the dream of going back to one of the bigger teams. Uh, and I think that Bottas is stuck in a rut. Yeah. But I don't rate him lower than, than Zhao. Um, I just think he that poor guy has always been in the wrong car, Zhao. And um, and you say he's in 17th, is that correct? Correct. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, can, I think, again, you know, if they were put into a more, uh, uh, more accurate, more powerful, better setted car, uh, I think that the, he would stand a better chance. I think he is a good driver. He's a clean driver. He's not usually the one in the crashes, um, except for the time he got flipped in Silverstone, of course um and that even wasn't his fault i think that was george um and i don't think that he should be rated or berated either 
Um, I, I don't think that Zhao or Bottas are giving a fair shake with that car. I agree with that. Mike, uh, did you wash your hands first? Of course. Okay. <laughs> so, you wash your hands. I have Botas at 18th and I have Zhao at 17th, but they're really interchangeable. Paul kind of said the same thing. I do think in a better car, Botas would be miles ahead of Zhao. But yeah. as Paul pointed out, Zhao's a very clean driver. And he is, and maybe you guys didn't know this. He's bringing thirty-five million dollars. Sounds team. about right. That's what that's so, what a pay seat cost in Formula yeah, One. It's been that way for a while. Thirty-five million. What was it? What was that? What, in, is that in sponsorships? No, that's he brings it in money. He's from bringing China. money from China just to have that seat. Thirty-five. Okay, that's what yeah. Malta, uh, that is. Yeah, that is the same argument. Malta, Malta is starting that kind of money. When he was at Williams, you. he actually won a race. Can you believe that? Yeah, he was. He, he was. He was actually Malta, pretty good. He just he couldn't. He. He only he could he he crashed too much. That was his big major problem. <laughs> he was quick, but he oh, crashed. His too major much. problem is he crashes. Oh. <laughs> okay, I can do but that. I think <laughs> I think at this stage we can almost go. Sergio Perez brings in the South American money. You know, Zhao brings in Chinese money. Uh, they uh, all bring money in. It's like there's no yeah in yeah. Logan They're brought in a lot of American dollar. So, yeah. yeah, they've all got a purpose, but, you know, you need the right drivers. It's not like Lance brought in money for Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got. You didn't put Lance got, Stroll as the. As no, the, no, just come on. What? No, I didn't. I got Ocon at 16th. Um, um, he likes to run into people. He likes to run into people. <laughs> and he's very aggressive. Even with his own team, he's especially not, he's, with his own team. not very good. That's the problem. You can't run into your teammate. You can't run into the other teammates either. So you can't run into anybody in a Formula One car as bad things always happen. Yeah. And I'm not going to belabor Ocon because I think we he actually almost destroyed him in, in the last show. We almost had a whole show about him. <laughs> Ocon. So I don't want to we belabor him. We weren't ahead. favorable. No, we weren't. So, but. <laughs> So we can almost skip over him because we yeah, destroyed him. Yeah. And to me, this is where I got Albon. Albon. I got him at 15. Albon's better than that. He's more like 10. Paul? Sorry, there is one thing we didn't discuss with this, which is um, where is Akon going to go? Because Akon said that it was his decision to leave the team yeah, and that he's got there. somewhere to go. And we're I not, nobody, the Haas. press, nobody's really talking about this. I heard he's going to Haas. That's what I hear. I hear that well, they already the, have you with Haas. That's a step and down and a foot out the door, Magnuson. isn't it? Yeah, Magnuson's out and, and Ocon's in. That's what I hear. But it's, it's okay. only a rumor, right. so it's proven to be fact. <laughs> of course. But um, uh, um, so let's be honest then. If he's going to go to Haas, it's uh, one step down and one step out the door because there is nobody else going to hire him after that. And you oh, do know, know that um, uh, Toto, I think Toto was managing Ocon. Like Maybe he was a Mercedes Junior. Was he? And what? he released him. Oh, that's he released right. He him. was on the, he was on the Racing Point team before. I forgot about that. You know, because yeah. remember, yeah. Uh, so, he, I uh, think uh, Ocon was a test driver for Mercedes a, a while back. So yes, total. Yeah, so, uh, I've managed him. But my, here's my point, Paul, and maybe you can add on to this. I think Ocon would be the wrong person to team with Ali Berman, and the reason why is he's not a good teammate. And I think no. we talked about this before. Yeah, we did. Yeah, but let's not let, let's not lambaste him again today. <laughs> we, yeah, let's, let's, let's keep it let's have a sticker. we should just have a sticker on Ocon's helmet that says "Does not play well with others, especially." <laughs> like a crash. A <laughs> crash. Let me crash helmet. Well, no, that's why they call it a crash helmet. They should just call it the Ocon helmet. <laughs> they should call it the Ocon helmet. We should change the name. <laughs> okay, no more Ocon. Right, no more. But yeah. so I got fifteen. And the reason why I have him at 15th is because that car is a should be scoring points consistently, like Fernando's. No, the car is not good this year. It's it, their car was a little better last year. Car though. is not good, but obviously when you see Fernando drive it, at least he's scoring points. What are you talking about? What, what do you mean? What am I talking, talking about? about points with the car. Yeah. So Albon should be scoring points with the car, and no, uh, they're not on the same team. Yeah, you got that Albon's mixed up. It's after the, the, knucklehead, after uh, Alonso's after, on the, the Aston Martin team. <laughs> oh my and God! What did I, I just had a Michael moment. Oh, I just had a Michael moment. I'm so embarrassed right now. Yay! This is the, great, this is the best part about the show so far. 
I just had a Michael moment. Wow. That, was that was horrible. That was bad. I, for, you can cut it out, dude, too. <laughs> for whatever reason, I thought, I don't know what came over me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Remember, uh, who is, uh, You're uh, rubbing off on me. Who is Alonzo's teammate who over. we love to blam bass to? Uh, Stroll. 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 And okay. Logan is with right. Albon. All right, so I got Albon at 15. Okay. Who's now, and the reason why is he's only had – he hasn't been – well, the Williams car is not that good. I agree. Yeah, that's the bottom line. The Williams car is not. No, that good. Uh, I I agree. I don't think I don't think that Albon is being the best Albon that he can be, and he was yeah. a super yeah, driver a in previous formulas, and mm -hmm. I think that he's not. Like, whilst James Vows is pushing like crazy and adding money and people, um, I don't think Albon, who's just been signed up for another two years, isn't it amazing? Every time they sign him up for another year or two years, all the drivers they crash and they burn and they do stuff. They crash. <laughs> <And> they, <laughs> they they got that money, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, just as a side note, when we get there, to uh, remind me to say something to you about Perez. But anyway, um, I don't think Albon is being the best that he can be this year, and I, I, I agree with you. I think he about fifteenth is about right, and that's not based on the car's quality; it's based on his driving skill. Yes, I agree. He's been See, in a few crashes. He's caused he's been a few things. Now he didn't do the last one. That wasn't his yeah. fault. And he's destroyed. He's destroyed. He's up there in the Destructors Championship. He's like yeah, third. Yeah, Destructors okay. Derby. Yeah. <laughs> he's like third. You got K Mag and you got Logan Sargent leading the way, yeah. and Albon's right behind them. All right. Yeah. So he's costing a lot of money, and he's not living up to his potential. Who's next? Okay, yeah. Gasly. I got Gasly at fourteen. Ah. He's another slug of a driver. I don't, I'm not a big, I've never been a big fan of his. And they brought him up. I think they, it's the same thing with Albon. They brought him into the Red Bull too soon. They should have given him another year in the Toro Rosso. But I still don't think, I still think it would have been the same result. <clears throat> not the best driver. Paul, you got anything to add about Gasly? I have nothing, I have nothing bad to say about Gasly. Um, I think he missed his opportunity by being back at the Renault team. Um, well, sorry, Alpine. But um, I think he, I think he has lost the uh, the, the chance to get into a major team, mm. and it's a shame. Uh, and, and it just seems to me that anybody that now uh, hitches their wagon to Renault or Alpine is just on a highway to nowhere, and yeah, therefore they're see. just yeah, they're just uh, trying to just earn some money and do some promotions, and well, that's when it. They, it's just... When they bought that team back in 2016. Mm -hmm. I remember they, them coming out and saying that they were going to try and do it with less money. And I was like, how is, how is that? That's, that's the recipe, sure recipe for not to win. <laughs> that's, what, that's what that comes down how to. How not to win Man. Formula One by Renault, LP, Cash App, Visa, or whatever. whatever. Anyways. <laughs> We got it wrong the last time. I listened back to one of the podcasts, and you ruined it then as well. <laughs> All that advertising for the Visa Cash app, and you couldn't say it. <laughs> now we're going to get sponsorship. Visa Cash uh, app. Visa Cash app. Visa, Visa Cash app. Yeah. We should call them. We should call them. <laughs> <laughs> we wish their name. Conversation. Conversation. of sponsorships. Why don't we take the time to? Oh God! Not are we, do, are we doing a doobie drink? It doesn't have any why we, in it. Why don't, why don't we take the time to, if you're listening, to remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Let me put up the little. Watch this. Watch, have they paid us any money yet? Watch, though? watch this, Mike. Watch. What are you watch, doing? Watch this. Watch this. Oh, okay, so like, <laughs> this isn't going to go look. well. Oh no! Like. Oh. Yeah, hit subscribe. the button. God damn it. Hit the hit the bell so you can be notified. So is that going to be on the show? Yeah, you saw that. That was yeah. cool, wasn't it? Wow, Jim is getting good with. I'm this really technology getting good stuff. with technology. Now here's even <laughs> better. <laughs> Get out there, you out there in the ether world, and buy your Doobie Energy Drink, which doesn't Doobie... have marijuana in it. Which I can't figure out why they call it. That. <laughs> Doobie brings you more energy. It's more fun. And you have more focus. Buy your Doobie Energy drink today. Use the code America F1 to get your discount. Go to the website, put in America F1, and you get a discount on your Doobie Energy drink. Now, having said that, let's move on to number 13, which would be Danny Ricardo. I still can't figure out the Daniel Ricardo thing. How I just don't, nothing, and that doesn't make any sense to me. He was. When he was at Red Bull, he was like right there. He beat Vettel the first year, and then he brought it to uh, Max every year. And then when he went to Renault, he was faster than 
Who was with him at Renault? He was he was awesome at Renault, actually. I think he was with Nico. Oh, he was with Holkenberg and he was with somebody else. He 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 to me, that was the best Daniel Ricardo at Renault. He was so fast. He he had that car. I don't know why he went to McLaren. I obviously the 25 million probably helped. But <laughs> he should have stayed there, but then now he'd be in whatever this is they're doing today. We well, should have never left Red Bull because he was a, he was on a Red Bull. I was like, that was probably his biggest mistake. And oh. they were going to pay him about that much money, but he didn't stay there. So yeah, because he could see the writing on. But the I don't know what I, it's like. Is it the car? Or did he did he lose it? I just can't see him lose it, forgetting how to drive. That's just weird. What do you think, Paul? Danny Ricardo. Well, we, we had a we had a conversation about Danny Ricardo one of the last podcasts we were on, and and I I stick to the same story, which is that. Uh, Danny Ricardo's biggest mistake was to leave Red Bull, even though he was going to be up against Max and he wasn't going to be the number one driver. He genuinely had the fire in him that he actually thought if he went off to the same sub engine supplier, which was Renault itself, uh, and Renault were pulling away from, from Red Bull, and he figured, right, you know, they've shown me the plans, they've, they've promised me earth, wind, and stars, uh, and he went to Renault, and it was a big payday. And I think he was there for two years, and then we had the shuffle over to... Um, so, sorry so uh, he shuffled over to mclaren and again it was the big payday and at that stage Macla mclaren was floundering at the bottom um and then he shuffled over and now he's he literally got a, a lifeline thrown to him by christian to do promotion and uh show up he got like a couple of million for that and then all of a sudden he was thrown into the junior red bull team car again and i think that i think that danny has lost it i think he's on the money train uh, we discussed this at length the last time mark which which was um when a driver has lost the chance to be in a formula one team that will give them a winning car they then have two choices and it's either keep on trying to get back to the the top tier teams that will give them the chance to drive well and earn trophies and and money or they get on the money train for the rest of their career and I think that Danny is on the money train for the rest of his career. Which isn't the, isn't the worst thing in the world you could do. I think he's made like a couple hundred million dollars now. So. Sure. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but I, I, don't, I still think when he went to Renault, I thought he thought Renault was going to do something. So I he think did. that was... He, he did. He did. Um, they, and look, I think when Renault, he Renault there, dirtied their bib, but Red Bull dirtied everybody's bib as far as engine yeah. supply was concerned. Nobody wants to be an engine supplier for Red Bull anymore. It's very funny that finally they, you know, with a bucket full of spare parts and some engineers and the rights bought to the engine, Honda sold it to Red Bull. Red Bull then have been developing it and using it. They finally got the engine right, which is what gave them championship wins for the last couple of years. And now Honda wants back into Formula One, which is well, very yeah, the, funny. The, the Aston Martin team, I think they're going to rebrand it the Honda team. I, I, can, I can't see him being yeah. the Aston Martin Honda team. I don't see that happening. Yeah. Well, Lance yeah. has got a bit of an issue there. In, sorry, sorry, to, but Lance has got Lawrence Stroll's got a bit of an issue there because he is a major shareholder in Aston Martin, the car company. If he removes mm -hmm. the racing team from Formula One, um, it's going to knock. It's going to have a knock-on effect. So I think it will stay Aston Martin, but I think it'll probably become Aston Martin Honda. I I, I don't think so. I think what's going to happen is he's gonna, he's going to sell the team to Aramco, which is the major sponsor right now. They're an oil company from yeah. Saudi Arabia. And yeah. they just bought 25% of the team. So I have a feeling they're going to buy another chunk of the team. And then Honda might buy the other half of the team. And then Lawrence will go away. And then there'll be no more Lance Stroll. That's what I, that's what I think is going to happen. Here's my controversial. <laughs> it's all, I have Lance Stroll. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Even though I don't like Lance Stroll, I think he does not belong in the grid. And if you, there's this thing on the internet where him talking about paid drivers and how there shouldn't be paid drivers in it's 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 sort of that total no self awareness at all. Like he's right. saying, there should be no paid drivers but in Formula he's, One, and he's the epitome of what a paid. No, driver he's not is. a paid driver. His daddy bought the team. That's Same. completely different. Okay, okay. <laughs> but here's why I have him here. When it's wet in mixed conditions, the best drivers come to the. Yeah, to, always. And in Canada, it was wet and it was mixed conditions. And Lance Stroll 
was fucking on fire. The guy, if he commits, because you can tell when you look at the fitness level, when you see all the guys, when you go to the race and you see the fitness level, he's probably at the lower tier. You can tell he's a rich kid who kind of maybe doesn't put all his in into this sport. I think if he got a sports psychologist, if he committed to fitness, he would be a lot better because he was good in Canada. And I'm going to give him his props. He was really good in Canada. What place did he come in? Uh, I don't remember. I think he scored points. I think I, I, off the top of my head, I thought he was ninth. All right. I can All right. look it up. While, while you're talking, Paul, I'm going to look it up because I want to be right about this. You're never okay. right. What are you talking about? Right. Never right. I, uh, you know, uh, we we got to we got to remember one thing that we look at Lance and everybody thinks, oh, silver spoon stuck up his butt. Um, you know, he did do well in the junior championships, so Daddy believed in him. And we've got to give it to him that when he injured himself pre-season last year, that kid went back to driving with like potentially what was it, two busted wrists and a busted yeah, ankle. I mean, he's got to be. He's got to be. Played. If Daddy died tomorrow, if, if Daddy in, died tomorrow, he's oh, got to be worth a billion, right? Oh, he was in seventh so, place. Anyway. He was I in seventh. Up. Okay. Um, seven. And I, I said this to you pre pre last week. I said this to you last week. I said you watch Lance in the wet. That's the one time he shines, right? Um, and he's shown some potential, but realistically, we watch Alonso pretty much every week, and then we go, nah, there's Lance, he's at the back, Alonso's at the front, Max is at the front, Perez is at the back, Lewis is at the front, George is meh. So, you know, it's the same thing over and over, it's the same story, and it will remain the same for a number of years. But Lance, Lance did do that piece, I saw the piece you're talking about where he talked about paid drivers but he did say that you know he had earned his place in the junior formulas and he was quite something in the junior formulas and i believe that then a pocket full of money from daddy and into f1 we go and does he deserve to stay in formula one honestly no no i don't think so i don't think he deserves a place in formula one he has not proven himself and he's had many years to do so Yep. <clears throat> what do you think, Lance? I think he's had one post. No, you love Lance so much. I, no, I just don't like his dad. I, I, but his dad's smart. You know, I mean, he took that the Racing Point team that was in receivership, and now he's turning. He built that huge factory. They have all, all this money coming in now. They're going to have Hondas. They're going to give him who knows how much money Honda's going to give him a year. Because when Honda was at McLaren, I think they gave him. A hundred million dollars, free engines, and they paid the driver's salary. And wow. Alonzo was making like forty million a year at the time. So those two factors will bring in a lot of money. I still think he's going to sell the team. Okay. And it's possible Lance he's a businessman. He is. He is a businessman through and through. You know, he he built clothing brands. He went to some of the clothing factory places, uh, outlets, manufacturers, and he bought the rights and he brought them into various countries and has made billions in doing so. Yeah, and he anything can... he touches, anything he touches, it becomes gold. So yeah, fair to that's... him. That's not his real name, by the way. Stroll is not his real name. Uh, oh, I know. He has another name. Yeah, they're they're they have a Jewish name. Yeah, well, it's not that, but they just they had a name that was almost unpronounceable, and yeah, it, 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 uh, it yeah, was. They changed it because it was more popular for them. Yeah. In twelfth or eleventh place. One of my favorite drivers on the grid. I, he's probably. Oh God, not Yuki Sonoda. No, oh. well. I love Yuki, but Yuki's not not to Yuki yet. Coming up, I got Nico Hulkenberg, and he's the consummate, just bad luck kid. He, he's a good driver. He's a solid, uh, a phenomenal qualifier. Well, he never phenomenal. Gets, he never gets the right ride. But he just never gets the right. He's never in the right place at the right. Well, he's time. going to he's going to Audi next year, and Audi's going to be good. Yeah, they're, well, they're, they're not just... going to come out the gates. Good. No, Two but years. they're going. Go ahead. Years. 2026, they're going to be, going to yeah, be up there. He's, he's going to the Sauber team for now, but it won't become Audi or have major Audi influence for two years, well, a year and a half. So yeah, I don't know if he, Nico's going to have the edge. I mean, Nico's one of the older drivers now, <clears throat> and he's never been on the podium. And I'm, I'm, I think it's a big, a big, big gamble on behalf of Audi for taking him on. They had a choice of many, many drivers. Now, don't forget, he's German. He's German, yep. right? He's German. Yeah. He's so, German. you know, took... putting a German driver in a German car. And let's, I have said this over and over again, and I've posted this over and over again. When pictures of the Audi livery comes up and the car come up, I keep going, do not ignore this team. 
You know, oh, no. Audi know what they are doing and they will come to Formula One with and they've spent they're deliberately taking like three to four years before they get on the grid. And I think Audi will be a team to be reckoned with. Oh, of course. The Audi they have a tradition of everything they touch turns to W. So I don't yeah, I, yeah. and I think I, I the driver we're gonna leave out that Sherman hates I bring up every week is Vettel. Vettel could end up in that second seat at Audi. No, he's not coming. Oh out. no, no, the gap is too big. He either comes back now in practice or it's too late. Like he's been now, this is two full years he's been gone from the grid. This is worrisome. And I would love to see Vettel. I would love Vettel to sit in that Mercedes for a year. Oh, yeah, too. I really cool. would. But, um, and it, you know, I think it might be the surprise. There are so many names attached now to the potential of sitting in the Audi seat, but sorry, in the Mercedes seat for, for one year. While they get ready, they get Kimi uh, Antonelli ready. Um, oh, he but, needs a year or two, I think, in a, in, a, in, a, in another team. Don't just chuck yeah. him in the Mercedes right out of the bat. It just yeah. he needs he needs some seasoning, and he he's not doing all that great in F two right now. Has he even won a race yet? No, he hasn't won a race. He hasn't won no, a race. and, and I, I don't I don't buy into the hype. Like I I never do buy into the hype about rookies in junior formulas. Um, I always wait to see. Uh, uh, I don't care how good they are in Formula 3 or Formula 2. I want to see them in a Formula 1 car when the real boys play and they have the real engines and the real aero. I mean, you hear the stories. You hear the guys talking when they're in F2 and they get to drive the F1 car for the first time. And they're like, this is unreal. It, it is just a totally different world to stepping from an F2 into an F1 car. Um, and, and I just find that very interesting. But if we... To switch back to what you said, Nico Hul I, I don't rate Nico Hulkenberg. Yes, he can be a good pole driver. And, and I'm sorry, the, the, the stunt they pulled with the tires, you know, at the last race where they went from like last to fifth in one lap. Well, it was, they were on the right tire for the right reasons if that had been swapped around in any other team. But it was a tragic move because we all knew, hey, yeah, you got four laps and you were gone. So... <laughs> Uh, but I don't rate Nico, and I and I find it very strange that Audi have have jumped on the bandwagon and taken him. Well, he uh, he drove for the Le Mans team when uh, is it Adrian Sad the the guy who's the uh, CEO? Yeah, he's he he, he, he they won uh, the Rolex not the Rolex twenty four but the um uh, the Le Mans twenty four race together a few years ago. So yes. uh, with, that's, uh, that's why he's there. Formula One driver. The what? Uh, was he was was it that was that team Nico and was that with an ex Formula One driver was that um, I think so no, I think it was the, Nico the commentator Kobe, 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 Kobayashi remember he's Kobayashi the, yeah yeah he yeah. was Nico Komi Kobayashi and this other guy you're talking about what other guy yeah. well the guy you just mentioned knucklehead what guy I just mentioned. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention to what you say. Anyways, that's anyway, I'm moving on. That's because why he's not. You're, 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 you're rubbing off, off on, on me. You're Come rubbing, on. rubbing off. Babbling on. idiots. Let's go. All in tenth, I got my oh, God. second favorite driver. Oh, actually, my third favorite driver. And we oh. all know who it is. It's Yuki Sonoda, <laughs> who is killing it in Formula One. And damn it, he should be in Red Bull seat. And I told you, Cole, that the reason why I'm for Reds is there is because of the fans and the money. And you said, oh, you think he's bringing up? And then what does it come out? Oh, well, he's in the seat because of the money he brings and the fan and the merchandise and blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, Yuki Tsunoda is doing a damn good job this year. He should be in that damn Red Bull seat. It's a crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. It's larceny. It's a felony. It's a misdemeanor why that man is not in the seat. You can snow 10th place. Yeah, every, every every big team is, is, is chasing after Yuki Sonoda to be in their second seat right now. Come on now. He's not any good. He was never any good. <laughs> I might go to the bathroom. I might go to the bathroom. <laughs> Pit stop. I'm not have to take Paul, this. what do you think about Yuki Sonoda? I think uh, well, wait, you asked me last time as well, so I'm going to repeat myself and say, so Yuki actually has made it clear that he actually didn't want to stay with Red Bull. So I was very surprised at the announcement last week that he's going to stay for another year um, because I don't believe that team is delivering him a, a car that can actually challenge. It's getting up there, but it's a falsehood that they are, they're, they're bringing their car to where it is. And once the Mercedes and the McLaren and the Ferrari get their acts together, 
um, you will see them slip back again. It'll be that simple. Uh, they just don't put the funding into that car the way they would to the senior team of Red Bull. And uh, Yuki as a driver, look, he doesn't get into too many scrapes. He's an aggressive little driver. He, uh, when he's not swearing on the radio, which we talked about the last time, <laughs> uh, he turns the air blue. Uh, I, don't, I, I, repeat, I repeat what I said to you, which was I heard something recently that apparently his manager said to him, Yuki, every time you swear on the radio, it's costing you a tenth, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so I, I think Yuki deserves to be where you have him uh, in 10th. So he is, I think, in the right car. I don't think he's ever going to be a Formula One champion. I, I don't. Um, but I do think that he is out driving the car that he's currently got. He's certainly making yes. a fool at Ricardo with the car. Um, and where will he go? I mean, I was so surprised that he decided to stay with Red Bull. Um, because he had made a public statement that he was looking and he was trying to get out of the Red Bull program because he knew that he would never get any further than the seat that he is in. Well, my and it is, is that he signed for another year. When Honda comes back, wherever Honda is in charge of, which will be Aston Martin, he's going to go to Aston Martin because most likely Fernando will retire by then and be the ambassador. Then Yuki will go and take that seat. That's, I don't that's know. My I, I predict Fernando drive until he's 60. Five, so yeah. <laughs> he, he hasn't lost one step at all since he was a rookie. It was like, oh my god, I still can't believe how good he is. He, I, can I can I tell you something, Mike? The guy the is, last... You know who he's like? Uh, he's like Andretti, right? Because well, Mario Andretti, drove. He's like Mario. Fifty-four. Yeah, because no, because Mario won Indy. Yeah. Mario won the Indy For champion, and then Mario went to Formula One and won a championship. And he won the Daytona Five Hundred. Yeah. So I liken Alonso to that. To him, like you give him any, you give him a truck. He's putting it in first place. Yeah, he's putting it on. Try a tricycle. You, you give him a tricycle. He's doing it. Paul wants that, to say that, something. Let Paul talk. That, that's that's the okay. last one. <laughs> and and the last time you know, we're talking we're about Alonso, this. Like Alonso on in and ninth. So go let, ahead. Let, Paul. Let, let, let Paul go ahead. Talk. talk about Alonso. We got him at ninth. The last time Alonso won a championship, Lewis was racing in Formula Two. <laughs> that's a minute ago, right? Hey, he's just there making bad career decisions. He's not. We're he not did saying make some he's really a good bad, career bad, decision bad, guy, bad. but he can drive drive his ass off. Yeah, he, he hasn't lost a, a no, step. He hasn't lost a step. He just can't make good. No, decisions. he hasn't. That's why I can't he's, figure he's out. He's a very car. skilled guy, and if that car was the Red Bull or if that car was the Ferrari, I think he would be back on podiums on a regular basis, and he would certainly be causing problems for Max. Oh yeah. Yeah. But he, oh yeah. But he, oh, yeah. But he, but he is too if, if Lonzo he, and Max, I'd pay you. I'd pay you. I'd pay. I'd pay anybody to see Alonzo and Max in the same. Team. Well, remember, I pay it. Remember, I, I, I quit my job and I go be a janitor for that team because the fireworks would be amazing. Well, remember the rumor that went on last year that uh, Fernand in the summertime during silly season he he was linked to going to the Red Bull. And it was like, holy crap. Oh, yeah, we did a show on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we did a show on that. <laughs> it would have been like, oh, my God. There would have been – there would be like – it would be the greatest thing ever because it would be a war going on. It would be – it wouldn't it – would, and it would be just blood in the streets. It would be awesome. So beautiful. <laughs> I, I genuinely uh, – uh, what's it called? So, so Sherman had said something before about, you know, is it in Max's contract? And I genuinely do believe that the person that gets to drive in the second seat, it is chosen pretty much by – the presence of Max and family uh, oh, as I'm part sure of the contract. Uh, but, yeah, as to who gets to partner against them so that they're not a true, a true risk. But every year Perez has been there. They've won the championship and the constructors' championship. So why would you get rid of them? You know? Well, I, I, I just thought it was hilarious that, again, the moment he got his two. And by the way, I wanted to say, I said this earlier, and I'm going to say it now. So Perez does not have a two year contract, he has a one year contract with an option for a second up. year. And people, you know, everybody goes for the headline and the sound bite and whatever. But the truth of it is, it's actually a one year with a one year. So, you know, and he knows he's not going to he's not going to follow in Ricardo's footsteps and make the same mistake. Like, oh, I'm never going to beat Max. So I'm going to bugger off to a different team. And it's going to be you're going to lose out big time. Um, you're never going to get the same sort of chance to, to run in the Fred Bull. So every time they, they win they win races, every time they win championships, he's getting shares in this. So why the hell wouldn't he just stay on the gravy train? 
Yeah. And remember, all all Formula One contracts are one year contracts. There's all kinds of loopholes to get out of your contract. Only Max right. and maybe Lewis have have airtight contracts. The rest of them, they're, you know, they're year to year, even though Lando just signed a big long term. I think he signed a three year deal. Mm -hmm. So but if, if that car doesn't work, he can he can he can parachute out at any time he wants. Yes, in, agreed. Now, these can be just like we had Zhao and Botas, and we could flip those mm -hmm. earlier. I think Lewis and Russell can be flipped. I have Lewis at eighth, and I have Russell at seventh. And the only reason why I have that, because I think in the race, Lewis is doing better. But in qualifying, uh, it's it's a blood it's a bloodbath. I yeah. Mean, I mean, Russell is destroying him in qualifying. And he's alluded to all kinds of things. You know, the, the tires not being warm enough. The things are being changed. From Q3 to qualifying and all these things from Q2 to Q3, well, blah, 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 blah. Let's blah. face it, the, the, but, the Mercedes isn't a good car. They said from the beginning if they can't get it to they can't get it to turn. It's too loose, it's too tight. It it wobbles down the it, it's slow in the slow piece, slow in the slow speed corners, slow in the high speed corners. They can't get the car to work. They said it was a little better at Canada, and it showed because they came in what third and fourth? No, they didn't. They, they came in, yeah, third and fourth, and, and Russell was on the pole, and I actually thought Russell did a horrible job. I thought he should have won that race. Pers that's just me personally uh, because you saw the speed in the car, but he always takes the life out of the tires fast. I don't think you know what I, you're talking about. I think you I do know, know what I'm talking about. Tires. Here we go with this tire bullshit. Here we go. I know I have, what I'm talking about. I have been about. trying to get Sherman you don't to go know to what you're talking about. Years. He, he won't go. Can't keep. The tires in you the light. No, doesn't tires know do. how to drive. Every hold time on, he's hold near, on, hold on. I'm gonna get Paul. Every time he's near winning a race, what happens? What happens? I don't know. He crashes and science wins. Oh, okay, okay, anyways. that's what happens. It's happened every time science has won. Paul, have you ever driven every a race time. car or a cart before? <laughs> I've had the pleasure of driving your your entry level. Tin, uh, open topped uh, race, like small race car, like a Formula One car, but just the junior, junior, junior version yeah, of it, manual with no gear and hub in the freezing cold in Ireland. Uh, yeah. It was the most frightening never the experience. I, 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 we were allowed to do, I think it was six laps. I came in after the fourth lap. People were spinning <laughs> off. It was <laughs> horrifying. I kept, now I was so low down, and you're looking and you just see this carbon, not, not even carbon, but whatever, fiberglass tub. Yeah. And I'm looking at it going, if I crash this thing, even though I'm strapped all the way in, if I crash yeah. this thing, this is going to garrot my neck. And I just didn't like it. So my, but what I did get from it was the uh, appreciation and, and uh, just a complete rise in my understanding of Formula One drivers who are in a car that's probably, 20 times more powerful and racing against 20 other people or 19 other people and just my admiration for them what just went through the roof i mean it was just like oh my god the next time i sat down and watched a race i went i just can't believe they do this for a living it is so scary so accurate it's gotta keep going to the bathroom have we lost him again that's good actually that way, that way, I can't hear about. I don't know anything about tires, and I don't have to hear about. Well, me. he was a karting champion. Tires were so important. Blah blah blah. <laughs> yes, the German tires. Look, it's the entire thing is a package. So you have the driver and their talent. You have the team and the car that they build, and then it's all about tires. It is about tires. It's not it's just about tires. And that's what I keep telling him that George is not good in tire man. George no, he's not. Not. no, George he's is not good in entire good. management. And look, I, I've said this to you before. I believe that uh, there are echoes of Bottas with George. So because anybody that's teamed up with Lewis, it, it becomes quite apparent. Yep, fine. You can. And there was something I wanted to say to you earlier, but I'm going to wait for Mike to come back. And this is about James Vows and an interview recently where he discussed uh, about Lewis and the settings Okay, uh, in practices and qualifies. So anyway, uh, I don't think that I, I see echoes of Bottas with George because he can put it on pole or get a good qualifying position. But then come the race, there's just, you know, issues and effort and maybe overexcitedness. And he's wearing his tires down sooner. 
And it just it shows and it's showing again and again and again. And it's a bit embarrassing for Mercedes because like, oh, George is going to be the number one driver for the team now. And I'm like, you're putting your money on the wrong horse here. You need to find a better horse. And that's why I keep saying that they need an experienced Formula One driver to get in that Mercedes car for one year, even if it's only for one year while they get this Kimi Antonelli, who nobody really knows about. Uh, you know, and and actually get the chance to get him in a rookie season somewhere else, so that we can be just be sure that you know he's not going to bin the car all the time and cost Mercedes an absolute fortune. Uh, and again, we'll wait for wait for Mike. I, I agree with that. I think that they're hyping Kimmy, and well, he's not winning F two. He's not second. He's yeah. not third. He's like I think he's sixth or fifth right now. Yeah. And so now that Mike's back, go and ahead. I wash my hands. <laughs> okay so give give mike the recap so mike just so well, he was asking about george here, okay we, we, we were talking about how george russell is not really good on keeping his tire life I, I, here, here you go with this damn phone again. i told you i gotta leave it on then, then, why because i'm a guy i'm inspecting the call can you put it on silent no and it'll, I'm just, inspecting it'll just like flash it when doesn't it's matter you, you can hear it you don't know what you're doing you, you don't know technology you put your glasses on I don't need to put my glasses on. You need I have glasses. to say, I have to say, Sherman, we've done this is our third podcast. The professionalism has just gone out the window with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Mike's around, I just lose it. Just, You're the full guy, Mike. So good. When he's around, next, I, next time I we do one, Paul, myself. we'll drink whiskey next time and we'll really go off the off the cliff. Okay. You know? Right. Okay. So, look, so right. let's so let's, just, let's just stick to the plan for a second. <laughs> Between Sherman and Michael this year, and he was going to bring up how James Bowles was talking about the settings. Yeah, what settings? But just you mean you mean he setting the hear, I'm saying, no. Sherman, he didn't hear the you conversation. You see what I have to do with? Do you have to see what I deal with all the time. Do you see it? I can't, You're listening. I can't. I can't hear you too much. So let's just let me say. So we were just talking about George, and I'm saying there are echoes of Bottas who, as a teammate, was good sometimes at doing qualifying, but then during the race, he would get tired, he would use his tires more, and, and he would fall back. And this is what George is echoing. This is what George is doing as well. He is falling back regularly in the races. Um, I, I and it was interesting. I don't think it has anything to do with his fitness. I think it uh, has to do with that car. I think the they run the tires off the car. It, even it happens to Lewis. And when I was when I was asking you if you've ever driven a car before, because I was Sherman's never driven a car before, so he doesn't know GT4 what the what what the, the tires do to a that's race car. Good race that's car. The, that's yes, the, yeah. You put a brand new set of tires on and go out and wear them off. No, because I didn't very think so. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> that cost a lot of money. Because yeah. I used to, I used to, uh, I used to race carts. Uh, Here we go. Here we go. No one cares. Back no one cares. No one cares if you used to race cars. 2008 Nobody, Rotex Lights Champion. Nobody cares. Five yeah. victories, two second places. So, uh, congratulations. Well done. Goals. Go ahead and talk about James Bowles. Congratulations. Well done. I know that go karting is the entry for all of the formulas That's to prove yourself. So and <clears throat> without that, you don't get to go into the bigger formulas. So, congratulations on being a, a go kart champion and, and having done what you've done. Um, and I agree with you. I've done a couple of um, tin top uh, stuff as well. Uh, okay. You know, like, you know, you know, saloon cars. And uh, that's really my thing. It's more safe. Um, I don't trust <laughs> myself in something like an open wheeler. Um, I've done go karting. I hate it because I, might, I don't have the muscle control for, you know, my okay, hands end up shaking. The 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 car? No one cares. No one cares, Paul. <laughs> Paul, no one cares about karting. Mike, no one cares about karting. Talk about it's James Bowles. Talk, talk about Bowles. Okay, talk okay, about, okay. So, no one cares what about I want karting. to say. Stop this karting talk. What I was trying to say, Paul and Sherman, is. I only wore a set of tires off a cart once, and it was in a race where my, my engine was uh, having like a turbo lag, and I was sliding the car, and you can't do that in a, in a cart or even a car, and I wore the tires completely off the car, Ooh, and right. now I know nice. what it's like to have a car with no tires on it. And talking about yesterday <laughs> with our show, America. <laughs> now we're going to take back to the show. Well, for the people listening... No one cares about Mike's carding career. Maybe we'll have a show on <laughs> Mike's carding career, career. Yeah. and we'll just call it Mike's carding career. And then people, all one of them, can watch 
and it'll be you <laughs> watching you talk about karting. Now, since we don't want to do that. Well, you were talking about tires that you know nothing oh, about as oh, usual. Oh, I mean, it's like I've been I'm trying to make a point and you're not letting me finish. But anyways, move on to the next Go driver. Go ahead, Paul. Talk about what James <laughs> Wolves had to say before I uh, like throw up. Uh oh, time. Go ahead. <laughs> right. What I was trying to say, Mike, you may not have seen this. There's been a <clears throat> there's been an interview where James Vows was interviewed, and he got to talking about when he was working at Mercedes and how Lewis was a, a nightmare for the engineers and the data analysts because they would set him up for practice one and because of all of the switches and all of the settings on his car. So he used to take the guys like four laps, all the other drivers, like four laps to get settled in the car and try to get the best and hit the right points. Lewis used to be able to do it in two laps. But by the time he came back to the pits, he had changed everything. <laughs> and it was a nightmare for them. This is a brilliant interview. Like, it's a real insight into how Lewis used to be and how he still is. And this is why, like, Lewis is very good with the data now. And he's very good at, OK, I'm not happy with that. I can feel this in my butt. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. And he used to change so much stuff. Now, we're seeing echoes of this <clears throat> last year when he was trying to rescue and help with the Mercedes. And this year, and he goes out. And he changes everything on the steering wheel. So it's all the settings, the biases, the, you know, the brake control, whatever it might be. <clears throat> he changes so much stuff. that They have a nightmare trying to unravel where they're supposed to be. And this is why you've heard him say, well, yeah, we had our settings there yesterday or this morning. And now we've changed the settings to here. And now they're totally different today. Right. And this was Lewis's own doing. And this is why he acted as the uh, acted as the trial guy all of last year, if you remember, um, and why George was, well, not last year, I think it was the year before, but George, you know, he ended up being the sort of tester guy and George went ahead of Lewis in the points. And then last year, he just changed his technique and whatever and proved his point and wiped George from the points point of view. And it'll be interesting now to see, uh, and you're placing, I don't think you're placing Lewis high enough, uh, not necessarily on success because this is based on the car, but if you base the driver, I think Lewis has gone forward in most of the races in, in his yes. positions by the end. Yes. And I don't think you're placing it. Now, it's not, not, not just that I'm a Lewis fan. I don't think you're placing him high enough in the rankings based on what you were, you know, the, the, the supposed, the sort of the, the graph that you've made here to place these people. It started with your suggestion, like I'm putting Lewis eighth. And I think he's, uh, I think he's a bit further up. But anyway, that's just an opinion. That's the point of debate. No, no that's good. But the, you don't have to agree with me. I want to know where you think he should be or where any of these drivers should be. And would you rank uh, Lewis ahead of George right now? Well, to, to, Paul's, ahead of to Paul's point, Michael Schumacher was the same way. He would go out and do basically the same thing. And his brain was like a computer. And he wanted them to feed him information all the time. And a lot of drivers, they don't want to hear you talk to him. And Lewis is one of those guys. He doesn't like people talking to him on the radio. And you've heard that over and over again. Don't talk to me in the corners. What the hell's wrong with you people? But Michael was the opposite. He was a computer. And he just always wanted as much information. And he was always playing with the car, the brake bias, whatever he could do to make the car go faster. And both of them are really good at, at doing a tweaking the car. So, And if, if, it, if it drives the engineers crazy, so what? <laughs> so, <laughs> right, you nerd. <laughs> <laughs> then he's doing his job basically so so i got so where would you so mike where, where would you mike where would you put lewis in this ranking oh he's still top three to me i mean he's he just doesn't have the car this year it's like it's like him max go. and maybe lando are the three best and maybe leclerc but leclerc makes too many mistakes and then there's the, the yeah. other three after that you know uh russell uh oscar Oscar, Oscar's pretty good. Oscar's pretty good. And I guess science. But I've, I've always thought science was like a, always a number two driver. So, <sighs> All right. So in sixth and fifth, I have six. I have Perez. Okay. And in fifth, I have Oscar. Okay. Yeah. No. I, have, I have really, really have nothing to say about either of those two drivers. They're, they're, they're usually hit or miss. So, Okay. In fourth, uh, I have uh, Carlos. <laughs> And third, I have Charles. Where's Alonzo? I we talked about Alonzo. He's all the way at ninth. You have him in ninth? Yes. All right. We're talking about just this year. I know, I know. He's still the yeah, but we're talking about just this he's year. He's still up there the with the car's Lewis a stinker and... this year. 
Oh no, the car's not very good. Yeah, exactly. Really. But he's still up there with uh, Max and and Lewis. Those are the two best drivers right now. Is Max and Lewis? They're right. the most talented drivers, I think. They get the most out of whatever whatever car they have. I, I think we're looking at a, a one, two, three. I think we're looking at Max because he's got the car. Is he using it to his talent base? Um, I I can't wait for the next. So what I'm really excited about is this triple header coming, then a two week break, then a double header. Um, and I think we're going to see Red Bull under some pressure or we could all be wrong and it could really they could fly off again. But I don't think so. And I think that uh, when we're, we're going to have to see Max actually drive this car, I think he's uh, like I've already said this in the previous podcast that I believe strongly that Red Bull are now scraping the bottom of the barrel with their parts, as in, you know, the allocation parts. And we are going to see penalties coming Red Bull's way because they're pushing that car harder then it needs to be pushed because originally the arrow was so advanced that they were getting away with this but now the other guys are catching up with their arrow and their and their kits that they're starting to push that red bull and red bull are starting to push their own car and i think they're going to start going through their allocation which is going to create penalties for them and we're going to see max having to start in fifths and tenths um and that's going to happen fairly soon so uh, and if we can spot in spain that red bull is under pressure then we're in for an amazing five races over, what is it, five races over six weeks or something. I, I can't wait. Well, any any track of straight straightaways, the Red Bull is going to be the quickest car, I think, followed by the McLaren. Um, anything that's like twisty turny, the, the, the Ferrari is really good. Um, and actually, the Mercedes, they made some pretty good strides in the in the Canadian Grand Prix, but I don't think that car is very good in slow and high speed. I, the slow corners, I think they have an issue with that car. You know they're bringing a floor. They're bringing oh, they're a floor. floor. We know that they are making strides because Red Bull's back to being Red Bull. They made a protest against Mercedes That's front right. wing. Even though the FIA said that it was legal, they still made an official protest against their front wing. Yeah, you can make a protest all you want. Though. But that's what Red Bull always well, of course. does. You know, I still think Red Bull, uh, th this year's car, I think they should have did an evolution of last year's car because this car doesn't seem to be as quick as last year's car. I mean, the last year's car was so much more dominant. So though. I had, we had Perez in sixth, we had Oscar in fifth, we had Carlos in fourth, we had Charles in third. Obviously, there's only two other drivers left, and that's Lando, Calrissia, Norris, and Super Max for stepping at number one. For Stappen. Is there an English teacher running around well, who, in the background is here? It's that, is there somebody back in the background, like there, there is no telling e me how Verstappen. to pronounce Verstappen every week? Verstappen, <laughs> Verst you know, Verstappen. It's, be it's on, better now. than what you call it. No, that's my I'll just say named Supermax. Him. Okay, Super so I mean, there's <laughs> no. I mean, everybody knows Supermax is driving the best this year, right? Well, sort of. The car's not as good as it was. Car's not as good, and in Canada, he proved he had. 10 laps to win that race and he had 10 laps of just about the same time lap after lap after lap and there's only a couple guys on this grid that can do mm -hmm. those same times lewis is one max is the other and i think alonzo's the other person well that, those are the those that's why right. when, I, when i say they're the best drivers is they they can go off there and do that because to be able to do the same lap over and over and over again is is but very only, difficult. Only reason he won that Canadian Grand Prix is because he made the least amount of mistakes. There you go. That's how, that's that's driving one on one for you, Sherman. <laughs> when we get off the air, <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> you better eat your Wheaties. Mike, I did my Wheaties. Mike, about four years ago, I coined a name for Max, which um, has gotten me in trouble. <laughs> Um, across many Facebook memberships, uh, moderations, and admins, and I coined I coined the name, so you may see it coming up in the feeds occasionally, which is uh, "Wax Your Strap On." <laughs> oh, my brother's gonna watch like, that. Wax, like that. Wax your strap on. Wax your strap on, and I, I literally, it is in my spell check at this stage. Oh no! <laughs> if, I, if I type W A instead of giving me was or something else, it just comes up. Wax your strap on. <laughs> okay. So as we conclude this episode of our Spanish Grand Prix preview, give me your top three finishes for the Spanish Grand Prix call. Wow. Oh, you, you, I can't, uh, and I'll, I'll say that because part of my sentences earlier. Um, 
I I genuinely think that Mercedes is going to bring a strong floor coupling to the front arrow that they've designed. This is either going to fail or it's going to be big. Um, I we've all wait we're all waiting to see will Ferrari claw its way back, and we know that Red Bull should be okay, but if they're under pressure, they will struggle against uh, the McLarens. So actually, I can't give you a prediction for Spain. Um, and I, I should look more into the Spanish track uh, and some of the histories there. But uh, Lewis always runs well there as well. Um, it's one of his tracks. He, he likes that, except at the time, of course, he came together with Nico. But recently, there's been footage of uh, uh, actually what happened. I don't know if you saw that footage, but um, Nico was actually playing with settings and he, he either missed a gear or something happened. So that is why Lewis was able to catch him the way he did in Spain that time when they crashed together. Uh, and it turns out that actually a lot of the fault looks like it could have been Nico's because oh, Nico no. was trying to the car. He, when that happened, it actually had came out that he was in mid gear. He misshifted. How do you miss shift mm. with a pedal shift? I'm shifted? just telling you, he he was in the wrong setting. Oh, he went up another he gear or something. Bottom. That's that. Yeah. No, that must have been. I don't think it's the shifter. I think it was a gear. It had to have been the gear because the shifters are are are, are paddle fly by wire. They're they're they're, they're electronic. They're yeah. No, they're paddle right? shifters. Right? I know, but yeah, but they're, if, they're, if they're, one side is up and one side is down, sometimes have you ever gone down when you should have gone up? No. You never had a paddle all shift. the time. Yeah, I have. I, 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 I paddle I shift like all the time. Shift. I used to own one for twelve years, and it was oh, a God. sports car. <laughs> and sometimes you're going high speeds, and every once in a while you forget, and you right. are supposed to be going up. And you Agreed. hit one yep. yeah. every once in a while. I've had, so I've had I've had two BMW M5 E60s with the paddle shift with the F1 engine. Um, I've had two of those, and I've had a Golf R32 with the paddle shift. And now, unfortunately, I'm driving a little Citroen 1.6 diesel, but it has paddle shift. And I regularly choose the wrong gear by mistake because you're you're trying to be smooth with you know with the fuel or whatever. And and I, I hit one, it's already turned one, and you hit it and you've got another one. So now I'm in fourth. Now I'm using more fuel than I need to. <laughs> like, oh God, I'm back to third, you know, that kind of way. So yeah, well, it so happened. My point is it is it even though these are the pinnacle of motorsports, mistakes happen. Shit happens. The guy was in the wrong fucking gear. Lewis caught him, and then he panicked and tried to close the door, and that's the yeah. end. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm so surprised it wasn't more public earlier on back then because we all thought, well, it's 50-50 or, you know, God. And I hate the commentators for this. They make up their own minds, and then they're like, they lambaste the driver. They all thought, like, oh, it's Lewis's fault or whatever, but it wasn't. It was Nico. He missed something. He had to change the setting back. There's even video oh, of it. I remember. No, I don't think he missed the shift. I think he had the engine in the wrong, the wrong mode. Is what happens. So right, that's right. That's fast. correct. Yeah, that's correct. And he didn't miss, that's what I'm mean, saying. There's no way to miss a shift in the current uh, Formula One cars. So it's, yeah. They're basically automatics. No, he had his engine right. in the wrong mode. And when yeah. Lewis busted a move under him, of course Nico went to go block him, and they ended up. That was Max's first win, by the way. 2016 uh, Spanish Grand Prix. Really? Wow, <laughs> and but typically from the Spanish, typically from watching the Spanish Grand Prix since 2007, it's usually not very much passing. It's not it's not a race where there's a lot of passing. Usually, oh, typically, but they, no, they have the, they, they they got rid of the chicane though. They don't have the chicane at the, on the last turn anymore. So you you're gonna see some passing going into turn one. They, it was a bunch of it last yeah. year, if I remember. Last year was I think it was or was it just like, Max just yeah. driving? It was it was Max driving away because I that's what I that's what I predict for this race is Max driving away. My prediction is Max driving yeah. away. <laughs> I think this is going to be uh, a dominant Red Bull track unless the the Mercedes get their act together, which I don't think, and the the Ferrari is not going to be any good at that track. It's all about top speed. So but the, uh, the who knows the McLaren might show up and they, I'd they, love I'd love Oscar to surprise us all and win his first race. I think before we I think before we get there. Uh, um, we have the opportunity that four teams could place well in this race. Um, yeah. And and I believe that's why I genuinely, I would be the one that would usually put my foot in the door and I'll say, no, 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 I think it's going to be this or it's going to be that. But I'm genuine about, I actually do not know of four teams who is going to be where. Um, and I don't think practice one, practice two or practice three is going to show us. I think it's no. going to be qualifying. And then the race itself, there's places to overtake. Um, I'm not sure if that's a track for the attrition of tires. Um, I, I can't exactly remember, but um, I would have I, I would have an open book uh, as to who is going to be 
able to put this across the line uh, next Sunday. And I, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to this round of races. Yeah, I'm looking forward to three races in a row. We want to thank Paul all the way from Ireland for joining us today for today's show of the Spanish Grand Prix preview of the State of the Grid. And we want to thank Mike for not drinking during the show because I really had a I get drunk moment. one time. You had a, all one I have, time? All I have is two oh drinks. Oh, my God. You're drunk <laughs> like every other episode. No, I'm dude. not. Oh, see, that's that's the one thing about people who are alcoholics. They don't really understand and admit to their alcohol. <laughs> and it's really sad. And I feel bad for Mike. I've known him a long time. And I'm trying my best yeah, okay. to get him through this period. <laughs> trying to get life. me to rehab. There so, you go. It's nice, you to no, no, him. No, it, it. it's nice of you to foster him. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, Say goodnight, Grayson. <laughs>